Good morning. Welcome back to the shop. We're on a new project now. Uh, it's been a little while since I've done any actual recording. There's been some construction in the house, actually on the shop, um, right behind me is uh, on the outside, past that wall, is a new shed that uh, I get to turn into a finishing room. So that'll be kind of cool. Um, but I've been working on that and dealing with contractors and getting you know all that stuff in a row. So you have just been catching up on my stockpile of video and I haven't had any real project yet. So uh, the next project I've decided is gonna be a little different, not, uh, not a guitar, sorry for those of you looking for guitar stuff. There will be another guitar probably right after this, I think. Maybe, we'll see. Um, the project I'm gonna, I'm gonna work on this time, or the current, the new project, this project today is, um, I'm in a, I, I along with five other guys started a woodworking guild in our local area. And we have decided that we're going to do our first gallery uh, show. Um, our first show at a gallery uh, in the spring and as a member of the guild I feel responsible for putting something at least one piece in this show that I'm willing to part with and sell and make as a just something to put out there for the to help support the guild and something that I'm not super uh, I don't know how to explain that that's not something I don't it's not that I don't care about it's that I'm just not attached to it <clears throat> it's not something for me. It's just for the sake of building something cool, hopefully cool. Uh, so what it is, I've decided is I'm going to build a piece. Basically, I guess in the art world, they call it on spec. Um, I'm just going to build something. And I looked around the shop and decided I'm going to, I was looking at some of the boards I've got laying around and some of the wood I have that I'm willing to use for a project that isn't for my house or for myself or for my wife or for people that I want to, you know, that I have a specific purpose for. And I found a couple of slabs of uh, walnut that I got a long time ago. <clears throat> oh man, it's probably been 10 years now. And uh, it's going to be a table, I've decided. This board that I found, this, this chunk, and I'll show you in a second. This chunk is about, I think it was two and three quarters thick. Two and, yeah, about two and seven eighths, two and three quarters thick. Um, about nine, if, nine and a half inches wide at its widest point, or its narrowest point. And I think about 16 or so, so oh, no, about 18 inches long. Yeah, roughly 18 inches long. And since it's so thick, I've decided I'm gonna make a, well, here's why I like it. You see the bees wing in that it's pretty spectacular and it's pretty good all the way through so I've decided that I'm gonna do something a little strange maybe maybe it's a little strange uh, I'm gonna resaw this in half which will still leave me several uh, several quarters of an inch of thickness probably if it's two and three two, it's actually it's about two and seven eighths it looks like right now so resawing it, I'll probably be able to get, I'll probably be able to eke out an inch and a, an eighth, inch and a, maybe an inch and a quarter. That'll put me around two and a half um, in total thickness. And then I'm going to book match it, but I'm not going to book match it this way. I'm going to book match it this way. So I'm going to get a long table. I'm going to do a long, uh, long, ish, probably 34, 35 inches long. Um, side table or hall table, something fairly shallow, not very deep, you know, maybe nine or so inches, maybe nine, might get, might get nine out of it. So that's the board I've decided, and that's what I'm going to start on today, is I'm going to build, and, and I'm going to tell you up front, no plans, this is coming completely out of thin air. I'm literally just winging it at this point, going with what I, what I see in my head and what the wood does and what wood I have and what I can make it into. Um, so unfortunately I can only describe to you the concept that I have in mind. We'll see if it pulls, if I pull it off or if I have to do something else. Um, but basically I'm thinking of a side table, hall, narrow hall table that's about eight or nine inches wide and maybe close to three feet, 30, Five, thirty-six, thirty, so thirty-four, thirty-five inches long, somewhere in there, um, and so shallow. 
but this bee's wing figure is so cool. I've decided that this is the side that I'm going to make straight and cut um, against the wall side of it. So it's, it's going to be intended to live against the wall. It could be a sofa table too, but I think it's going to be a little taller. Um, do a sofa, uh, a, a, a straight line here and make this book match because it'll be an end to end, which I realize is an end grain to end grain book match, but I'm working on, I'm working on solving for that. Um, and then for the base, I've got this vision of sort of a, uh, it's probably the most artistic slash organic idea that I've had in my head. I'm not a very artistic person. Um, but the, the plan or the hopeful plan is these, uh, the beeswing figure, this, this crotch figure is sort of uh, kind of like a tree sort of the top of a tree if you were to cut it off and it would have a shape and something going on. So the base I've got in mind is some sort of a branching style tree trunk, maybe half a trunk that's gonna sit against the wall, something for a foot of some kind. I don't know what I'm gonna do for a foot yet. I'll figure that out. Um, I've got these massive slabs of oak that I have no purpose for. They're sitting in a trailer I've had for same amount, uh, maybe a little less time than I've had this about eight years, nine, eight or seven or eight years I've had the oak. Um, and it's four or so inches thick. It's really heavy duty stuff, but it's warped all to heck. So what I'm thinking of, if I do something kind of, because I, in building the guitars, I like doing the organic shaping of joinery, um, where the neck joint goes into the body is a really cool um, process. I like doing that. So I'm going to try to do that with a base of some kind that's, you know, it may not be tree looking, but it'll be inspired by a tree, you know, something with a trunk of some sort, probably in the center, a couple of branches out on top, maybe a branch or two out on the bottom to work as feet or legs for the, for the table. Um, but it's really sort of an abstract uh, thought that I just, I'm trying something. I'm not very artistic, but, or at least I don't think of myself as very artistic. But at the same time, I have a curiosity and I kind of want to try being artistic. So that's what we're doing here. That's the lesson, that's the interest that I've got that's making me do this, is I want to try something completely unplanned, sort of very aesthetically driven. It doesn't have to be uh, as utilitarian as I tend to think in my most of my projects. Um, so that's the plan. And uh, that's what I'll start doing. And I'm going to start working on this top first because it's the slab I have in front of me. Um, it's raining today, so I'm not going out into the shop or into the shed. Or it's actually sitting on a trailer. To get the oak off the trailer, I'll wait till it stops raining. I'm on vacation this week, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a lot of time to play around with this. But we'll get you tighter in, and you'll see this slab a little better. And then what I plan on doing with it to make it into a tabletop that is book matched on the end grain. We'll bring you back. The shape of this pan plank, this is all, I'm not going to call this, this isn't natural edge, this is chainsaw edge, and it's not, I don't know if you can see it, but it's not square at all. I lose about, oh heck. Oh heck, I probably lose three quarters of an inch by the time I get up here. Maybe half, eh, maybe about a half, but yeah, maybe closer than that. Anyway, it's Wayne. It, you might as well treat it as Wayne. It's not. That's a chainsaw edge, but it's, it's not square at all. So I need a square edge. And also, um, let me flip it back to this side. The figuring in here, there's a real light spot up in this corner. So if it's out hanging over this cantilevered edge anyways, I'm going to be cutting some of that off. Since I'm cutting some of this off, I have a chance to... Uh, not correct, but rotate the figure in the piece in a more advantageous way. And so one of the things I'm, I'm watching is I don't quite like when uh, I, I took some photos of this and I brought them into Photoshop and I flipped them and mirrored them and I played around with what the figure was going to look like when it got book matched. And one of the things I didn't like is that this angle, basically there's this effective angle of the grain um, of the bees wing figure and it's sort of a swooping like this. And I didn't like that when they get matched together, it felt a little V, too much of a V shape. And I want to sort of flatten that out a little bit without losing too much of the width. So what I'm going to do, or what I'm going to attempt to do, is I'm going to flip it back over to the s smallest side. This is the shortest, this is the widest I can possibly get it. And that is just a hair over nine 
uh, about a nine and a uh, very much about basically nine inches wide. Yeah. So I have a little room here that I'm going to use. I'm going to spin it this way so I can see and you can see. Is I'm going to put the a straight edge along the corner here, and I'm going to lop. Oh, I don't know. Heck. I'm going to if I kept it at nine. If I sort of tried to keep it at nine. That's about all I could take off. All right, so I uh, put a ruler down, and that's not going to take too much off. And starting at this corner, if I go completely straight across at nine inches, it only takes a little bit off, and the figure is still kind of making that V. So now I'm going to tilt towards the the short side just to sort of move the figure down a little bit, about an inch or so, and that helps. You know, I've got extra width there anyway to play with. And so then I'll just make a line that I can take to the saw and slice off. So this is basically setting where the figure is. Now we'll take it to the saw and trim off that end. Okay, so we've got our pencil line. We're going to just make ourselves a nice little slice through the bandsaw. And then I'll clean it up on the joiner after that. I'll try to go as straight as I can so there's less to clean up. But I'm not too worried about it being super straight either. Um, I can't use the fence because this line is not parallel with this edge and this edge isn't straight either so that's why we're doing this freehand and we'll just uh, try to keep it as clean and smooth and straight as I can so I have less to joint up less to clean up on the joiner um, so we're just gonna get ready and do that next So we cut that off there and that's our, this is basically establishing our straight line. There's a tiny little bit of a dip right in here where I was a little bit unstraight on the bandsaw. But it's sitting flat enough to resaw now and I'll use the, I'll take advantage of the boards being thinner and lighter weight after I've resawn them. Um, so the next step is we're going to put this on the bandsaw and resaw down the center, slice this thing as close to perfectly in half as I can get it. Um, so that's next. I'll put you on the bandsaw now. First. I'm going to cut this weiny, this uh, uneven edge off. It'll make it easier to center it up on the bandsaw. So I'll cut that, cross cut that first, and then I'll go to the bandsaw after that. Okay, that, was, that went reasonably well, actually. Pretty good. Um, I'm going to look at it in a second, but I'm going to get an idea of what thickness I ended up with. Um, let's go this route here. 1 and 12, 30 seconds. A little heavier than that, 13, 30 seconds on that end. 1 and 12 on that one. 1 and 12 on that end. One and 13 on that end. So it was mostly pretty smooth. Let's see if it did it on the same. One and 12, that's really good. I got pretty close to the center on that. That's great. That is really great. I'm, I'm deliberately not opening it up yet because I want to, I guess I'm teasing myself doing it, but. Yeah, so I'm pretty pleased with how reasonably even they came out. All right, let's open it up. I'm going to open it up like I expect it to look on the table. So we'll do like this and like this. 
and there's a little bit of curliness going on with the with the cut marks but you can see this is where we're headed in this vicinity um, I do have some cracks that I will fill um, I'll fill those with some kind of an epoxy thing or something like that well we'll worry about that um, you can see we need some squaring to do for sure we got definitely got some squaring to do but in the end overall length we're gonna hit 35 probably we'll hit 30 we'll be over 34 17 to right here and we'll cut off some of that um, width wise we're gonna hit ooh, we're gonna be a little shy of eight and a half is what we're gonna be we're gonna come close to eight and a quarter probably we'll lose about a quarter inch here um, but yeah I'm pleased with the resaw came out good they're almost exactly the same thickness which is perfect um, so I'm gonna go over to the uh, cross cut uh, to the miter saw cut this end off get that square with this face this is our, our square reference edge um, I'll cut this end off so I can get a sense of where how things are gonna look yeah that came out good there's actually some decent symmetry going on here I like it all right I'll bring you back here in a second Okay, there we are, they're cut. Um, this is pretty close to the joint. They're thicker. One is a little thicker on this end than I thought it was, but if you turn them the other way, they're almost exactly the same thickness. So it wandered a little bit when I bandsawed, but that's okay. We'll basically be making them this thick, as thin as our thickest, as thick as our thinnest piece here. But you kind of get the idea here from a, a grain symmetry standpoint I'm gonna run these through um, since I've got about a millimeter I've got to take off here it's a little less than a millimeter I'm gonna take it to the planer first and then I'll take it to the drum sander and we'll sand it smooth um, yeah so I'm gonna I'm gonna plane them flat because they've been through some stuff just now they just got you know they just got resawed so they're gonna take they're gonna move a little bit so we're gonna take them to the planer real quick get them roughly the same thickness, at the very least get them smooth on each each face. Um, so now we're looking at that as our, as our beginning point. So we'll go look at the planer next. now plain to close enough to rough thickness I guess I'll call that um, you saw what I was doing there it looked like it was a little weird process but the idea was I was trying to avoid snipe so I kept chaining them together training them together putting them together on a uh, one after the other including replaning resending one through twice so that the one that is getting cut doesn't snipe on the out on the lat the trailing end it actually worked really good I don't see any noticeable snipe I see a tiny little bit of bandsaw markings left right here at this edge, but I'm not worried about it because this is not my final surface. This is just flat now. And so at this point, I am now ready to uh, rip these two rough widths and then get my uh, joinery worked out here. I think I'm going to rip to rough width first, I think. Yeah, and this edge, these ends look great. It'd be cool if they were more, slightly more symmetrical, but we lost a little bit of thickness, so it's not going to be great. There's pretty good though. So just trying to line things up so that the grain has as much symmetry as I can give it, and that's going to basically be my my. Uh, locating point there okay yeah we're ready to do I'm not even gonna bother ripping the width yet I'm gonna do the joinery next um, and I have to think about that so I'll bring it back here in a second okay so the joinery I've chosen I'm gonna go with is I'm gonna cut a big old wide slot in the end of this right in the center nice half inch thick slot um, and I'll get it as deep as I can get it on the router table um, and then I will fill it 
with a interesting. I will fill it with a strip of poplar as deep as I can. I'm basically going to make a big, long, big, fat spline that's going to go in there. The idea is the grain direction on this board and this are in the same. They both run together, so I don't have a cross grain situation, so I can glue the whole piece in as deep as possible to keep it, you know, fairly structurally sound. The idea there is it's not going to be the only thing that keeps the table spanning strong. There's going to be a big support right in the center so that it'll hold that seam from cracking, hopefully hold that seam. There's going to be big support in the center and a support on either end, probably, or near the ends. So that's the plan. Um, I'm going to go get set up on the router table to uh, do an interesting little slot cutting operation. So I'll bring you over there for that. Okay, so what I've got set up here, got a half, half inch spiral uh, up cut, which will send the chips that way. Um, spiral router bit in the, in the thing. It's only sticking up about a quarter inch right now. I've got a stop on this side and I've got a stop on this side. And what it'll do is I'll, I'll s I'm either going to tilt, I have to see what it's going to be, feel what it feels like. Is, but the whole point is I will press, this is the top, both tops will go against the fence. I'm going to press against the top, the top against the fence, drop it in, and then slide it over to the other stop. And that's going to give me about a six inch long uh, slot. And then I'll lift it straight up off of there. Um, so the idea is just a, a series of small plunge cuts to cut a nice big old slot down the center of this. Um, and I'm going to keep raising the bit and get it as deep as I dare go um, until I don't feel safe uh, doing the plunge. Because if I plunge and it's way up here, it's going to trace an arc in that slot. And I don't, wanna, don't necessarily want it that way. Um, what I probably will do after I do this is this is hogging the major material out and then I'll come back with a mortise chisel and square up those ends and make them perfectly plumb so that we get as much me mechanical uh, st stick mechanical structure in there as possible. But that is the plan. I'm going to do the same with this board. It's just the, the top face, the, the face that will be the show face, it will be up, will be pushed against the fence. And I've just got to be very careful that I don't tilt out and just keep everything together. Um, so this will be one of those, we sneak up on it and take it easy sort of tasks. Um, I'm going to pull down the dust collector and we're going to get after it. That went well, well enough. We've got our slots in there and they're centered. So basically I've just got them aligned well enough to do the, to do the task. Cool. So then we're gonna take this poplar stock. Hopefully it's thin enough. It is thick enough. It's too thick for the slot right now. So we're gonna take it to the drum sander and dial it in. And then I'll figure out whether I'm going to bother doing a uh, doing a squaring of the tenon. I think I might need might not need to. So our final depth came to one and almost seven eighths. Might as well call it one and seven eighths. Yeah, that's good. It's about thirty seconds shy of one and seven eighths. So that's going to give me a nice um, almost four inch long spline down in there. That should be plenty strong. I think that'll be all right. It'll be a half inch thick, so that should be good. And then, of course, there'll be some strength gained by the end grain. Um, yeah, so we're going to take this drum sander, get this thing as thin as it needs to be to slip right into those slots. I'm actually going to cut it. I'm not sure if I'm going to cut it to width yet. No. I'm going to hold off on cutting it to width because I want to be I want to be sure I can get it just right, just the right width and all that stuff. So, yeah, so we're coming over to the drum sander. Bring you back for that. Okay, 
that uh, that took care of that took care of thickness. It slips in there nice. A little bit of snugness, a little room for glue should be good. I have decided I'm not going to cut it. I'm not going to square up the corners of these mortises, and I'm not going to cut this full width. I'm going to leave it with a tiny little bit of room because I want to be able to shift them, you know, so that they the grain lines nicely. So now we're going to take and cut this. I'm going to rip this down to about about five and three, by about five and seven, seven, excuse me, five and seven sixteenths. Sorry, five and seven eighths, five and three quarters. Five and three quarters will do it. So real quick, rip on the bandsaw or on the yeah, on the bandsaw is fine. Just do a real fast on this edge here. It doesn't have to be great. I'm gonna drop these down. Move this over. Move this over. And just do a real quick pop here through that. Five and three quarters is plenty. Or whatever the heck that happened to turn out to be. There. Okay. Just drop it down. It's going to be a very fast cut. Nothing to it. Okay. Now we just get our depth out of this. Well, we might want to go a tiny bit skinnier than that. Let's go a little bit less. Okay. Go one eighth inch less. That leaves me a little bit of room for it to slide in. There we are. Yep, that'll do. I'm not going to use the knotted side, of course, but haha. <laughs> It is just a bit snug now. That's good. Okay. So now I'm going to take my my depth of oh, it looks like it's a heavy 64th shy of one and seven eighths. So if I cut this at three and seven eighths, no, three and three quarters, it's going to be a bit long. So we'll do three and we'll go a little over three and a half is what we'll do over the miter saw. Just a real quick cut here of three and oh a heavy half. Three and a half heavy. We'll go three and we'll do five eighths. Three and five eighths. It should still leave us room. So cut a square end. Cut that off. Not pop it free. This will be our tenon stock. All right, so we got our tenon stock now. Just do a quick little dry fit. And then I'm going to grab my whoop, grab the mallet here. Just do the toasty bottoms out there. And then slip you two together a little bit heavy there I might shrink this in width just a tiny bit further get, get our like faces together here I'm gonna grab my dead blow so I don't damage things here. There we go. Should come together nicely here. They're bouncing off one another, so make sure this seam looks great is my main concern. There's a little bit of schmutz in between them, so. But there's my, it's pretty solid. That's my panel. Yeah, that'll do. So there's my dry fit. That is very, very snug. That did get 
a little bit, but it's all right. I want to get the sm stuff out of there and get it ready for gluing. So I'm going to try to force these things apart here in a second, and then we'll bring it back. Okay, so the dry fit went well, got them apart. It was a little tricky to get apart, so I thinned down my, my tenon a little bit, but not too bad. Um, so we're ready to glue this up. I'm going to split my plastic a little further forward here, so it's covering where the seam is going to be. <clears throat> so now, it's just a matter of applying the glue rather liberally. So I'm going to grab a brush, because I want to be ready for that. And so now I can adjust things when I get to that point as well. So we're going to mush in some glue here. We are ready. Ready to go. Ready or not, we're doing it. Piling in some glue like crazy here. And I'll spread it around in there. Try to get as much of it onto the walls of the mortise as I can. There's going to be a little capillary action happening here. Let's get it on this end grain as well. Try to get a bunch on the end grain if I can manage it. Got plenty down in there. Okay. I'm going to slip the tenon into this one. And get it seated. Okay. That is as in there as it's getting. Okay. Do the same on this side now. Making sure I keep track of which faces are up. to be severely lacking in orientation because then I would be making cuss words lack crazy. Okay. Suppose if I was really worried about it I could use epoxy here but I'm not that worried about it. I think a four inch long, almost a nearly four inch long tenon and an undercarriage of support is gonna make sure this end to end joint is plenty strong. Okay, we are ready to Slip them together. Got the right faces and the right ends together. That's good. Should probably try to do this laying it down, but there we go. That worked. All right. Now we can set this on here and bring our curve heads up closer. Just drive it that last eighth of an inch home here. There we go. And we got some squeeze. I'm going to throw a little. I'm going to just get on it here. How are we here? I'm going to grab a cloth and get this glue out. good clamp clamping force there get a little water just a little water it's okay I'm not staining it so I'm not worried just check this joint here yep it's a good thing I did not go too crazy about matching the thicknesses Mostly concerned that the seam is 
good. Make sure there's no gap there at all. I'm going to grab another clamp. And we're going to come from this side here just in case we need that extra straightening force here. Get my hand good and sticky so I can get a nice grip on this handle. There we go. There we go. There we go. And it did squeeze a little more out, which is good. That tells me that I got that seam good and closed now. Okay. Now, I'm happy with that. I'm very happy with that. Um, I don't think I really have. I do have some of this over here, but it's not very... Nah, it's fine. I'm good. I'm happy with this. That seam looks good. How is the symmetry in the grain? Fine. I got that perfect. Yeah, that works. Cool. So that is my first attempt at a end-to-end uh, -end glue up that should be okay. Looks like it's going to be fine. That is ready to go. Let that chooch. And uh, call it a day. That's good. Um, not much else to say. We managed to get about an inch and five sixteenths thick, which is great. The thicker was, I wanted it thick on purpose. I want, uh, I've got another feature I'd like to put into this that I'm going to talk about next time. Anyway, end of that. Bring you back when it's dry.